Wow, good evening and thank you so much. Um, We have been made so welcome here uh, already by so many people. Uh, You know, you have this sense, don't you? You're joining in and uh, we want to be really clear about that. Nikki and I know that we're joining in with what God is is doing. Uh, It's about uh, taking the vision that you already have and saying to God, asking God, how do you want us to open it up? You know, you guys at St. Paul's here at Trinity, you've already been doing, you are doing the most amazing things. And it is a privilege for us to be invited by God to come and join in and say, how can we be part of this story? So what's been your story becomes our story together. Uh, Jesus is the leader of our churches He's always been the leader. He always will be the leader. Uh, But over the years, in different chapters, some of us get to take on particular responsibilities. But we have to be so clear, don't we, that uh, every single person is absolutely crucial to what God is doing. The Bible tells us that, that you, each one of you, is critical to what he wants us to be as a church, what he wants us to do to our, to our purposes. Yet there are some of us who get these titles, lead pastor, team rector, and we get to stand up here and we get rounds of applause. And of course, that, that is lovely. But the Bible says, actually, we're not the ones who need any more notice, any more attention. It's the hidden parts It's those small, small in worldly ways, things that get done, that make a church a church. And if you hear me say nothing else tonight, and you may decide to switch off, most of my family do after about five minutes. So I just want to get in there quick and say, if you hear me say nothing else tonight, it is that you are perfectly qualified to be you. I I can't have your friends. I can't have your family. I can't go to where you're going to go tomorrow. I can't be at school where you're at school or at college where you're at college or work where you're at work. I, I can't invite those people to Alpha. You are perfectly fitted, perfectly qualified to be you. And for me, becoming a full-time minister was a step back out of, out of the world. Actually, God, it was a little bit kicking and screaming, to be entirely honest with you. My dad was in ministry, was a vicar, so I, I had a great time as a vicar's kid. I loved it. Nothing, nothing about that was the problem. The issue was, I said to Jesus, I said to God, I really don't want to stop being part of the real world. And actually, in full-time ministry, that's really what you're doing. You're not, you're not stepping up. You're, you're being set apart within to serve a particular purpose. And that purpose is to serve you. You are perfectly and uniquely qualified to be you and to serve God in the most special ways. So if you need to switch off, switch off at that point with that truth in your mind as you go from here. And when you look in the mirror, tonight, tomorrow, some of you clearly haven't done today, but tomorrow, (laughs) look in the mirror and just look at yourself and say, yeah, called by God, named by God, uniquely qualified to serve God. So thank you for sharing this title of lead pastor with me but we're we're building we're we're joining in and when you enjoy fruit you remember the people that planted the tree so I could talk about names that some of you will know about some of you will think who on earth is he going on about Charles Simeon Francis Close Lawrence Totty John Risden Paul Harris Mark and Karen Bailey Tim Hills Gareth David Harry Gary you I could talk about so many people who have planted and we're enjoying the fruit. So thank you for this privilege of joining in with you. Let me show you a family picture, one that I just took earlier. There we are. Um, (laughs) 
Yeah, anyone old enough to remember ABBA? Yeah, they kind of come back, haven't they? It's like everything. Skateboarding, I can, I can actually do it. I can do the whole thing on skateboards. As you can see, I am exactly the right weight for someone who's six foot three. Yeah, and I, it, it comes back, comes back round, doesn't it? And uh, ABBA, I, uh, I, I, well, my Nikki loves ABBA, basically. And uh, I love that song. Well, I don't really love it at all, but it fits with the talk. What's the name? What's the name of the game? Anyone know that one? Well, sing it then. Come on. Yeah, no, really. Really not going so well at this point, is it? So, but what's the name of the game? And of course, this isn't a game. This is kingdom business. I mean, we are to be filled with joy. But you know what? There is no divine right for this church to exist. Do you know that? The church of Jesus Christ will, will exist to the end of time, whenever the Lord returns. The church, his church. But for any one particular church, there is no divine right to exist. Are we going to serve God's purposes together? He has trusted us with so much. With, at St Paul's, trusted you with so much how are you going to use it? So it's not a game, but that little phrase, the name of the game, just points us to, uh, to think, doesn't it, about what's the most important? What are the, what are the fundamental things? And obviously that's what I'm trying to think about as I take on this role with Nikki and think about all the things that, he, that God might want us to do to open up the vision and in conversation with Rog to think about how you guys from St Paul's might open up your vision even more. Because there is so much more, isn't there, that our God wants to give to us. So I am old enough to remember Abba. I'm also old enough to enjoy Radio 2. Any Radio 2? Yeah. Simon Mayo, three word Fridays. You have to sum up your day in three words. So that's your challenge. Sum up your day with your neighbour in three words. Off you go. You've only got three words. How's your day going? Okay, that's enough. So I wonder, uh, I wonder what those three words, mine, mine you will realise having just moved are in a box. Where is it? In a box. Everything is in a box. The dog is currently somewhere in a box. I want to share with you three words very quickly, simply tonight, because they will tell you something about me and my heart. They will tell you something about the church that I've been part of and come from, and I can, I can do no more than that, than tell you how the Lord has led us. They are actually three things that I do know already chime with St. Paul's, chime with Trinity. And they're three words which might just be useful when we're trying to talk to other people about Jesus because you know better than me because you are there on the front line that we have to find ways to connect with what people are really talking about what the name of the game is for them they don't use our language they don't talk the way that we talk even in forgive me fashionable trendy charismatic evangelical churches we just use another kind of language that they don't understand. So three words that might just connect, and I want to use the story of another short man, because, well, I've shared that already with you. It's Zacchaeus, chapter 19 of Luke, just from verse 1. Let's just read it through quickly. It's going to be on the screens. So I'm sure some of us know this story, but just in case... On the screens, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, 
Come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. Maybe you've thought of the verse John 3, 16 as being a great summary of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. This is a pretty good one as well, isn't it? To sum up what it means, this good news that we want to share in three words. And the first one is hospitality. Because Zacchaeus is the worst of the worst. He is a chief tax collector. Throughout Luke's gospel, something's been going on. Something's been rumbling away right the way through Luke's gospel, if you, if you know the story. Because consistently, Jesus has been welcoming, and people get offended by this, welcoming tax collectors and other sinners. And Zacchaeus, no accident, is the chief tax collector. He is the worst of the worst. He is the absolute stereotypical sinner. And Jesus knows him by name. Just like he knows all those people to invite on Alpha already by name. And he looks at him and he says, Zacchaeus, come down out the tree. I am coming to eat with you. I want hospitality in your home. And the crowd mutter, because this guy is unclean. He is as cut off from God as it's, it's possible to be cut off from God. And Jesus, you, the rabbi teacher, you go in with him, you sit with him, then that dirt is going to transfer itself to you. But Jesus says, Today, no accident, today, I'm going to sit and eat with you. Now, there's, a, there's a difference between welcome and hospitality. And churches like ours, and how glorious it is to say ours, churches like ours can be really good at welcome. We've experienced that. We've actually personally already experienced something of your hospitality as well. But in larger churches, that can be a challenge. You're welcomed week one. Week two. And maybe you just feel like that personally as well. Does the Lord Jesus really want to sit with you? The answer is yes. There is no way that you could be actually in reality more potentially cut off from God than Zacchaeus would have felt. And I know I'm speaking to one or two people directly now. However you feel, Zacchaeus would have felt that. Jesus knew him by name, just like he knows you by name, and says, I want to sit and eat with you. So, look, I want to say something about the hospitality of God, that Jesus gave it all for us on the cross. He absorbed sin on the cross, and he absorbs Zacchaeus' sin, the uncleanliness, and restores him. And the sign of the restoration is in verse 9 because now Jesus says he is a son of Abraham. He's one of us. He's adopted. He's in the family. Just like Jesus wants to say to everyone here tonight, if you don't know this truth, you're adopted. You're in the family. You've got sons and daughters, some weird uncles and cousins, but you're in our family. You belong 
you belong. He wants to sit and eat with you. He wants to share table with you. And the joy, and we've sung about the joy, the joy is manifest in Zacchaeus. And it's kind of the picture that Luke is giving as he sums up the gospel, the good news. It's messianic joy. It's a picture of the future. If you think about your gospel stories, it starts with a wedding at Cana, feast. And it ends with Last Supper. Well, it doesn't end with Last Supper, does it? Because it goes on to the feast in heaven. And Paul teaching the Ephesian church, the baby Christians in Ephesus says, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Maybe as we open up this vision together, we could talk and think and pray about the table, about hospitality. So please hear this the right way. So that the king's table is never something that we just do as church. It is us church I'm not saying that because I think it isn't but I hope you hear the point and I just want to say again if you feel just ever so much on the outside if you've maybe felt welcomed but not gathered in maybe this is a word for you tonight Second word is wisdom. Could we say something as we open up this vision to people about the wisdom of God? Zacchaeus is a seeker. He's a little guy like me, so he climbs a tree. He's heard the rumours about Jesus for three years. He's heard, heard the speculation. He's wondering who Jesus is. Are you here tonight because you're just wondering who Jesus is? And you know that you have all the knowledge you need you don't need anybody else to tell you any other kind of fact about things. You can look up on your phone. But what you're desperate for is the wisdom to use that knowledge. You've got big decisions to make about life, about death, about all kinds of stuff. And you know what you need is wisdom. Well, Zacchaeus knew that. He knew that in Jesus, in his very presence, in encounter with him, he would receive the wisdom that he was desperately seeking. And so we do the same things, don't we? We point to Jesus, to encounter with Jesus. You know, when you go into prayer ministry, I know you guys know this and you're taught so well. We don't spend half an hour telling the person what we think about it. We just get them straight to Jesus. That's what we need, isn't it? Point people to Jesus. Be led in that by the Holy Spirit and the word of God as our guide. A little bit later in Luke, Luke 21, Jesus is gonna promise his disciples, when you need my wisdom, it will be in your mouths and it will assure you of relationship with me and it will be the way that you deal with the word. Do you need wisdom? You got tough decisions to make? Whose voices have you been listening to? Your friends, your family, whose wisdom do they really need? See, the problem is a lot of people want wisdom. They just don't think it's in the church, do they? It's the truth. Well, praise God that you guys are out there every day, perfectly qualified to be you. Third one, last one, are you sticking with it or did you switch off 10 minutes ago? Generosity, third one is generosity. So I wanna, I wanna ask questions and think about, uh, about opening up this vision for hospitality that our churches share. I want to think something about what it means to share God's wisdom through Alpha in many other ways and finally, can we talk about generosity? Could we think about generosity together? 
Zacchaeus' response. So he comes down, the crowd are muttering, and Zacchaeus says, I'm telling you what, anyone who I've cheated, I'm paying back. I'm going to give 50% back to. Now, the, the absolute maximum in that culture for restoration, if you'd sinned, was 40%. If you added all the percentages up, was 40%. He says 50%. Some people wonder if he'd already been doing this and that's why salvation comes. I don't think that's what the text says. I think it's very clear that this is part of his response. The things we do are the concrete expressions of our faith. God is not a one-armed bandit. We don't put stuff in, pull the lever and then stuff comes out. But the concrete expressions of our faith are the things that we do. And living generously, living generously in response to all that God has given to us is the only way to live. It's the only authentic response. I love that thing that J. John, you may know him, sometimes says. He says, you know, do you imagine that God is just applying for the job in your life? The truth is that some of us can live like that can't we? To live generously, to give away. And of course, yes, that speaks about our money. And you guys know, I'm sure, because you have been well taught, you know, don't you, that money is not a neutral commodity. Money is not a neutral commodity. You have to take control of your money. You have to intentionally and positively, and if you're a a younger person here, you get on this road quickly. Take control of your money so that it's not controlling you. And I want to say something about time. One of my little kind of shoot it out of the air things is when people talk to me about work-life balance. There is no such thing as a work-life balance. Because to talk about a work-life balance is it implies that here's work and here's life and they're against each other. People kind of do it with church, life, church, family, life. There is only life. And God calls us to live generously for a balanced life. How are you using your time as much as how are you using your money. We as churches are called to live generously. There's part of our vision to share together and to open up about being resource churches. Because there is a temptation, isn't there? There is such a temptation in every season to kind of look a little bit inwardly. Please hear this the right way. I didn't say it quite the right way this morning. Please hear this the right way. In a very powerful sense, I'm not really here for you. I'm here for everybody else out there, all the people beyond. And those on a staff team are here to serve you in going out to all those beyond. Could we talk about hospitality? Could we talk about wisdom? Can we talk about living generously as together we think what the vision in these churches might be as it it opens up? Because in this little story of a little man is everything. There is sin beyond sin. But then there is a calling from Jesus There is reconciliation. There is restoration. There is joy. There is peace. There is salvation. And then there is service. It's not a bad little story, this one, to reflect on further. Would you like to stand with me? If you're able to, of course. So shall we invite God 
to do what he wants to do. We never have to be, we never have to ask for God's presence. He's always present. But we do have to ask so often to be aware of his presence, to be open, to be open to his presence. Let's do that. Jesus, to be aware of your presence. You called Zacchaeus by name and you're calling each one in this room now by name. Can you hear his voice calling your name? He wants to sit and eat with you. He wants to do life, share life with you. Have you felt on the edge? Do you wonder if Do you wonder if it's not for you? You feel cut off. But Jesus is saying, your name and calling you. Just a sense of the Holy Spirit maybe whispering in some ears. By name. And then a question around wisdom. Whose wisdom have we been living by? Whose voices have we been listening to? Is God truly God of every part of our lives? Our money, our time relationships and how does God call us to live generously what could that mean for you to live generously It's a bit of a new chapter for me. Maybe it's a new chapter for you.
I'm going to do what I did this morning because it's always good to receive from the Lord. I'm going to stand at the front for prayer myself because I need that. And if you'd like to come and just stand alongside because you'd like to say something about hospitality, about living wisely, about living generously. If you just want to be a new chapter, come and stand alongside and ask Gareth to lead us.